So, this has been quite a really awkward day. I don't know how to explain this. I've basically shot this video four times already. This is my fifth time. And in each of the times I've shot it, I've had some errors, like my audio didn't record. That was so annoying. Another one where my video just kept on skipping frames and it was just unusable. Then it didn't save as well, like, I don't know what to do, but hopefully this video is going to come together nicely. And here is a short disclaimer that I should give you before I get into the video. I may go through some steps very quickly and you may not be able to understand everything. But if you have any questions at all, just put them down in the comment section below, right there, and I'll be sure to answer them as quickly as possible. So without further ado, let's get into today's video. Fifth time lucky, I'm gonna launch Premiere Pro CC 2015 here. I'll show you the actual version right here. I've talked about why I use this version in other videos, but anyways, here's a recent project I've done just earlier today. And I'm going to go through the different keyboard So the first few that you need to know are Control C, Control V, and Control X. So Control C is the default copy shortcut in Windows. So Control C, then move your playhead, which is this blue bar anywhere on the timeline. Select a layer that you want. I'm going to pick the default number one and click Control V. That automatically pastes the clip from here to there. And it's the exact same clip, none changed. Control X is quite similar but different. Control X is a cut command. So Control X, as you can see, that gets rid of it here. Then Control V, for instance, and it pastes it here. Very useful. Control Z is the undo command. So Control Z. Now I'm going to show you the Alt command and in various ways you can use this. So if you sec select the clip, any clip, I'm going to pick this one right here and hold Alt. Then you drag the clip anywhere, let's say there. It copies the clip automatically. Very useful. But what I prefer to use the Alt key for is hold the Alt key before you select your clip. Now click either on your video or your audio. It doesn't really matter. And you can extend one of these twos separately. This is phenomenal for G and L cutting a sequence. Control plus Alt together allow you to move the clip anywhere amongst the timeline while having the clips move around it. So let's let me just show you what I'm trying to say. Move it, let's move it here. As you can see, everything to the right of this moved forward. This shortcut is essential when you're doing non-linear editing where you make up your own sequence of events. I use it so much when I'm vlogging or doing any of my other videos. When I want to put something to happen in the afternoon, in the morning, etc. Many of you may know that audio is super important when you're trying to make a video. But let's say you're here and you increase the audio of this clip to a maximum of 6 in the audio clip mixer. But it's still not loud enough. What can you do? Well, let me zoom in on the clip. You select the clip and press G. This brings up the audio game command, and here you can type in any number, let's say 35. And that will increase the gain of the clip by those decibels. Super effective. What's great about this keyboard shortcut is that you can select a number of clips, press G, and it will change the audio gain automatically for all of these clips. The keyboard shortcut M drops a marker. And this is just a default marker. You can see like you can change the color, change the name, comments, all of these things are the same. I use this command most often when I'm doing a first round of cuts in my sequence. I pop it down whenever I'm not sure about a clip or I want to insert a title, description, some fancy transitions, etc. I usually like a highlight feature more than anything else. The next two keyboard shortcuts are kind of a pair. They're I and O, or in and out. So I and then O. This sets an in and out for your sequence, and it's essential whenever you're trying to render a small part of your sequence, or you're trying to export a small section too. So if I have these select and I click Control M, that brings up the export settings. And here, as you can see, I'm only exporting this little short part, the short 
eight second part of my whole sequence. Very, very useful thing. As you probably know, space either plays or pauses your sequence. And that's about it for the default keyboard shortcuts. Now I'm gonna get into the proper meat of this video. My personal keyboard shortcuts. You find these on edit and keyboard shortcuts. And I have about seven custom made ones. The first is the selection tool. I changed this to an X because it's very comfortable and easy to click. The next one is my razor tool. And this is basically the cut command. I changed C because C for cut and it's super easy to remember. Third one is track select forward. And I picked the key Z for this. So I'm going to show you what these three commands do. So let's, this is the selection tool default here, but when you have that selected, you can basically move a clip anywhere you want. Left, right, up, down. Razor tool, which is right here. Or C. You click it and you can cut a clip into many different parts. After you cut it, you click the selection tool, which is X, and you can move that cut part anywhere too. So I just like briefly rearranged them and overlapped some other clip. Now this one's very interesting, track select forward, so you can find it right here, but I have it set to Z, so let's click that and click on the sequence. As you can see, every clip right to where I clicked is selected. This is so effective when you're trying to move a large portion of the sequence around. I'm going to undo these last few things and show you the rest of my shortcuts. So when you're trying to delete a clip, you can either right click it and click clear. Clear is a default delete function of Premiere Pro. But I have a set to D. Because for me, D kind of signifies delete and I just remember that really easily. But I personally don't really use clear that often. I use ripple delete far more often. This set to F. These two commands are very useful. So if I select this clip right here with my selection tool and click D, it deletes the whole clip. Handy. But let's say I want to delete this clip and move this clip to the left. I can either click D, delete, and move this right here. But if there's many other clips to the right, let's say this one and this one, I'd have to move these one by one or like click Z and move these all together. A bit of time waste in my opinion. So what I do is I select the clip that I want to get rid of with my selection tool and click F, ripple delete. And this gets rid of the clip while getting rid of the gap as well. It's such a time saver, thank me later. The next two keyboard shortcuts are probably my most used ones and that's zoom in and zoom out. So you can either do this, find your place in the timeline, zoom in, etc. But that's super time consuming and it's very fidgety. I prefer to use the keyboard commands A and S. So I have A set as zoom out and S as zoom in. The last keyboard command I use is maximize or restore active frame. And this is set to grave, which is basically the button above tab. And this keyboard shortcuts full screens any of the panels that you've selected. So here I have this panel selected as you can see by the blue box around it. So I click grave and it full screens my whole sequence. Super useful whenever I'm dealing with a lot of layers. This is a pretty simple sequence so, so it's not a good example but believe me. You can also click the program window and full screen whatever video you're looking at super handy or full screen like your effects panel also very useful anyways these have been the keyboard shortcuts that i absolutely love and use the most and i probably can't live without them like my editing would take so much longer so thank you for watching my video hope you picked up something new if you did maybe leave a like and even consider subscribing till next time